Hi everybody, <laughs> welcome to Nerds Garage. I'm Suzanne. I'm Dylan. And today, what's on the table? A Kickstarter! We are talking about Lock Up Breakout, which is on Kickstarter today. But before we talk about it, let's talk about the base game Lock Up. And it is by Thunderworks Games. De uh, designer is Stanislav Kordonsky. Mm -hmm. uh, artist Lucas Ribeiro. Apologies to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we are kindly give, given a prototype game to play for this review uh, by Thunderworks Games, but our opinions. All our own. Our own. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the base game first. It is uh, playtime in about 90 minutes, one to five players. It is worker placement. It is secret bidding. It is set collection and area management. Uh, when we last met, our faction was imprisoned at the Kobold Prison. Kolbach. Kolbach. Kolbach <laughs> Prison. And once a year, there is an opportunity for our crew to compete to escape. And that's what we are doing in this game. This game is done in six rounds. And Dylan, tell us how, about, how we play the game. So each round is split up into three phases. First phase is the roll call. Well, each player will put members of their crew into the rooms they want to be in. Now, one at a time. You place your crew members in. You can put as many as you want, and you can have up to two upside down. However, Ugh, secret bidding. Ugh, after ahead. you've put people in a room, you can't take them out or move them around. That room is locked for you. And then you go player to player until everyone has used all of their crew or they have opted out. After that, you go into the lights out phase. Which is where you go through all eight rooms in numerical order. Starting up to exercise yard. Where if you win there with the most power, you get a power cube. And you also are the next round's first player. And the power cubes you accrue. And there's one crew member that at their numerical... The enforcer. The enforcer. Their numerical amount changes by how many power cubes mm -hmm. you have. Brilliant. The next three rooms all give you the resources you need to buy and build items. You have the sewers, the infirmary, and the smithy. Then you have the commissary where you can trade an item for an item. Or if you're first place there, you just get an item of your choice. Then you have the chow hall where you can recruit goons into the cause. And the goons, they either give you reputation right away, or mm -hmm. if you crew multiples, they score higher reputation. Some give you points per items you have, or points per red power cubes. And they can also, when you buy them, give you resources as well. Mm -hmm. Then you have the cell blocks, where you can either craft items or reserve items. Oh, they're so adorable, the magical items. Mm -hmm. Then there is one room left, but you can't place anyone there. The only way to get into the last room, which is the library, is either to opt out of the reward or be in last place in any of the rooms. And I found nothing negative about the tome cards that you get in the library. They are amazing, because the library is where you get the tome cards. And they have multiple... Uses. Yeah. They're instants. Some happen immediately. Some you can play during specific phases. They're all very useful items to turn play to your favor. And it's never a waste because at the end of the game... If you they, have any left over, they're worth points. They're worth points. Now, the last phase, the patrol phase, is where basically in normal games you just reset the board and go on. However, in this one... When you refill the goon cards on the board, there's a chance they'll lay down a suspicion cube. Now, when you're going through the rooms and collecting rewards, if you do not have a lookout, you're going to have to pick up those cubes. You're being very suspicious. If you have a lookout, not suspicious. And then the guards are going to sense... They're there's, suspicious. Yeah, and then there's a raid. There's a raid if... Um, all of the suspicion cubes are used up and you can't place any more down. 
At that point, there's a raid, and the player with the most suspicion cubes loses a lot of points. Mm -hmm. And the second place. Mm -hmm. And then, but those go back into uh, the pile on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the thing. When you're deciding which room you want, some of them have resources, some of them have suspicion cubes, and you try to plan it out to, you know, when the raid is most likely going to happen to make sure that you're not going to be in the lead of the cubes. And then at the end of the sixth round, there's always a raid. Yes. And at the end of the game, you just total up all your goon cards, your resources, and your tome cards, mm -hmm. and player with the most reputation wins. Mm -hmm. And we found, when we played the core game, mechanics were... Divide and conquer, right? Yes, most definitely. I mean, uh, I tried to get all the magical items, and I didn't get the win. I know you went for the goons. Mm -hmm. uh, when we found that we split, that uh, it was a better chance to get the higher score to win the game. Uh, I also found when, in the base game, when you had the first player token, which breaks all ties, mm -hmm. uh, was very fruitful. Oh, extremely. Game. That was the base game. Now let's talk about the expansion. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do you make a really fun game better? You add a dungeon. You add a dungeon, the catacombs. <laughs> I mean, and the mechanics that they've added to this game has really ramped up the uh, strategy. The, oh, I'm going to kill you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the it, gameplay. It, here at Nerd's Garage... We're extremely competitive. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. All right, so uh, uh, Breakout, the expansion, uh, comes with, oh, there, here we are, the last we've met. We are still in the Kolbok, Kolbok? Kolbok. Prison. And there are rumors, and there's a lot of them, mm -hmm. that there's tunnels. The tunnels that lead to a catacomb. And in the catacomb, there is loot. And a way out. Yes. So. We now have lanterns and tunnels on the board to go to the catacombs. This expands the game immensely. Adds, Didn't even know we needed it. And it is so good. It adds new goons that have super unique abilities. Oh my goodness. The goons. And there's only a few of them added, mm -hmm. but their mechanics are like, we are just... That's the first thing we fight for, Out all of, the goons. of us, trying to get there. And we had a tunnel in the spot to get the goons on one of our games, and it was just... Amazing. So, some of the new goons are the Fungaloids, which they disappear as soon as that round ends, if you do not buy them. If you get it, you immediately move up one space in the dungeon, and you get points per treasure you get in the dungeon. Catacombs. Catacombs. I know. We play a lot of D&D. &D. That's the thing. We do a lot of D&D, &D, and so sometimes we don't want to do a four-hour thing of D&D. &D. We want something yeah. light. And this game really fills all the voids there. It is just like playing It is D &D. amazing. We're all playing here. Because you get a faction, it and you get a crew. Also adds new legendary cards, which oh. are in infuriatingly awesome so it's like having a new room it's mm -hmm. the ninth room and it's the legendary cards next to the catacombs and once you've placed all your crew your normal crew your last tile you must always there's no longer opting out of a round mm -hmm. you have to place a tile upside down does not count towards the two upside down you get on the legendary and I have to tell you, the rules that they put in here are very unique. They're fresh. The game changing. Oh, yes. It can flip the entire tide of play of who's winning, depending on the legendary Absolutely. mission. So they've, they've also added new magical items. New tomes. Oh, yeah. They're really good, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but the catacombs and the legendary cards are... are the, the main draw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, the mechanics that work for us now, we found, is that the opposite of the base game. You focus, instead of spreading yourself out amongst all the options, you choose two and go deadline on it. 
Like, I focus purely on catacombs and goons. And he killed it. He killed it. There's more ways to get reputation. And not only the legendary cards give you reputation, the catacombs give you reputation, e escaping the catacomb, traversing the catacomb, and getting treasure are three separate ways to get reputation. The new goons give even more reputation than the old goons. And yeah. new items just... Oh, and the artwork is just, you know... Amazing! Adorable. I dare say adorable. Very adorable. It is, it's a much deeper, more complicated game. It is still a swift game, especially for setup, if you know the rules. Uh, the level of interaction is high and lively, especially mm -hmm. with us. Um, the curve to mastery is a bit steep. A little but bit, yeah. <laughs> once you get there, it is a well-oiled machine of trying to get the most points. We finally broke 120 the other day, I do yeah. believe. Yeah, it was you. Go yeah, ahead. I know. Go I did. I did. I broke 120 <laughs> points. Uh, it is really rare for the Nerds Garage, everybody in the garage, to like the same game. And this game ticked off all the fun boxes. It did. Uh, we highly recommend all of Nerds Garage mm -hmm. to check out their Kickstarter. And the base game. Yeah. Uh, Lockup is out now. And it is... Amazing. It is so much fun. It is so much and fun. And then go check out the Kickstarter because I want to I wanna see it. I know. I want to see it with all I the I want to see cool the finished pieces. pieces. Yes. And I'm sure there's going to be more to come. This is a, a, a deep level of strategy and fun. Wow. I'm personally waiting for a new faction. Ooh. That would be Hear interesting. That? Thunderworks games. All right. So it's Lock Up Breakout <laughs> is on Kickstarter right now. And it is by Thunderworks Games. And we highly recommend it. So get it. It's amazing. Can you escape? We did. Bye.